Prepare for takeoff, please. Welcome to another video. If you haven't guessed already, this video is some of my tips on how you can survive long haul flights. So I'm gonna get straight in, but before I go into the video, I just want to ask you guys to subscribe if you haven't already, and also follow me on Instagram as well. All right, so before tip one, I wanna give you guys a, a bonus tip. And if you can follow this bonus tip, then you don't even need to watch the rest of the video. So if there is one time to use your sky miles, it would be right now. If you can upgrade your flight, this is gonna make the whole world of a difference. And uh, yeah, it, I mean, obviously a lot of, like a lot of the times you can't upgrade, but if you can and you've saved up some miles, um, I'm telling you. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Do it. Come on, do it. Do seriously, what? seriously. Do it. This is the only tip that you need. So for those of you that can upgrade, we will say our goodbyes right now. Bye. And for those of us who uh, have to book into economy like myself, here are some of the tips that I've been using over the last couple of years on my travels. So tip number one is comfy clothes. I like to wear some sort of like leggings or loose pants or trousers, a baggy-ish t-shirt and a hoodie because it can get kind of cold on the plane. So I like to have the hood over my hair, keeps me warm and I also like to wear comfortable shoes, so sneakers. Tip number two, pack some toiletries. So I like to pack the essentials, which for me are face wipes, deodorant, toothbrush, toothpaste, facial moisturizer, a lip balm, and a little bit of perfume. I get this like, little stick from Zara. They're really cute, really small, really light, and they smell great. It's really nice to just be able to freshen up halfway through your flight, or if you have a connection, um, freshen up once you land at the airport. I can't tell you, this just makes the whole world of a difference, and it's just so much better when you feel a little bit cleaner. Tip number three, I always pack a spare pair of underwear, spare pair of socks, and a spare t-shirt. Firstly, because a lot of the times when you're flying, you can get a little bit sweaty, a little bit icky. Airports are pretty gross. I mean, there's hundreds and thousands of people moving through them every single day. So sometimes when you do feel like that, it's just so nice to have some spare clothes to change into. Also, you never ever know when you're gonna be delayed. Sometimes, I mean, one time I was delayed in Atlanta for like 13 hours, and I was so glad that I had some spare clothes to change into. Every little bit helps, and if you feel a little bit cleaner, I just feel like it's easier to to get through the day. Tip number four, always make sure to bring a water bottle, aim for a litre, and this way when you're on the flight you can get the air hostess to fill it up, otherwise you're stuck with those tiny little plastic cups. No, 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 get no, 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 eh? don't really fit much water in them and then you've got to constantly keep asking the ASS to fill up the water so you can drink it. I would definitely suggest drinking as many liters as you possibly can throughout the flight because it can be dehydrating and if you can stay hydrated this is going to help with your jet lag as well. Tip number five bring a neck pillow, some eye shades, and earplugs. I can't tell you how much of a game changer having a comfy neck pillow is. I use a brand called Cabo, and it's um, a memory foam style pillow. It's really, really squishy, it ties up at the front, and it's great for supporting my neck. I've tried a few other pillows on the market, uh, like the ones that blow up because they're easier to fit in your bag, but honestly, they're not that great. And this one with the memory foam is so comfortable. The only downside is, is it is a bit bulky and hard to fit in your bag so I tie it on the outside but honestly it's just worth carrying around. The next thing is eye shades. So there is a lot of blue light all around. I mean when you're looking at your phone that's emitting blue light and um, there's LEDs all over the airplane, you've got the TV screens, you've got other people's electronics and when the blue light is going through your eyes it can mess with your circadian rhythm. So 
it's an idea to sort of, that's why people tell you to shut off your electronics before you go to bed because um, having less blue light gets your body ready for sleep. So one thing I would suggest investing in is um, blue light blockers, which actually help to block out the blue light and get your body ready for sleep. So you can just wear them before you get to the airport and then on the plane, and then that should prepare your body for sleep. The next thing is earplugs. Um, the plane's a very noisy place. It take off, it's super quiet, but as soon as you're mid-air, everyone's up, people are getting their suitcases from the air cabins, babies are crying because they don't even know where they are, you've got the air hostess coming in with the noisy tray, get some earplugs and this should get rid of all that noise for you, or you can use noise cancelling headphones as well. Tip number six, I prefer to book a night flight. This is because a, I can wake up earlier during the day and I can get everything that I need to get done. I'm not stressed in the evening time, um, all my bags are packed. And then also, um, I can get a workout in during the day as well, which will help me be a little bit more tired during the evening time. Another tip is to wake up a couple hours earlier than you usually would. So say you usually wake up at eight, wake up at six. So by the time you get to the airport in the evening, you're gonna be a little more tired than you usually would do, which is good because if you can sleep through your flight, this is one of the best ways to make time go by quickly. Tip number seven. So there are two types of people in this world. Those that like a window seat and those that like an aisle seat. I used to be a window person until one flight, I was sat by the window really, really happy and halfway through the flight I like really needed the bathroom but I looked to the side of me and there was these two passengers that were just so snugly like in their seats full, fully asleep and I was like I can't wake these people like I know how hard it is to get into a deep sleep especially on a plane I cannot possibly wake them so I basically kept looking around and you know the person would move like slightly and I'd be like yes they're gonna go up and then they'd go back to sleep in their little comfy position and I was like oh my gosh so I literally spent the whole flight like wobbling around just trying to like hold myself and uh, from that day onwards I was like I am never ever booking in a window seat ever again. So it's safe to say now I am firmly an aisle person and um, more specifically I like to book the seat which is in the middle of the middle of the place. So you, you know you've got seats towards the outside, you've got an aisle, you've got seats in the middle, an aisle and seats um, to the other side. I like to book an aisle in the middle because usually there's like if it's you, one other person, and then another person on that side, this middle person between you both can actually choose who they want to disturb if they want to get up. So if I'm asleep, the middle person is going to ask the left person. Whereas if you're on the outskirts, two people have to ask you, so you're more likely to get disturbed. So that is my little tip if you, uh, yeah, and also if you're going to be drinking a lot of water, which you should, um, and I'll say it's great because then you can go to the bathroom whenever you want. Tip number eight, eat a good healthy balanced meal before your flight. Firstly, airplane food isn't the best for you. Secondly, um, this, is, this is kind of a debatable thing, but people, um, a lot of people like to fast during the flight because it can help with jet lag. But for me, I, the idea of fasting on the flight is the worst because you're not very, very busy. And when I'm not busy, I just think of food, especially when they're rolling food out to you like every hour of the flight with snacks and things. So the idea of fasting is not for me. I like to eat before. And if you do want to eat on the flight, um, another idea for you guys is to maybe order a special meal because special meals always come out first. You can order a special meal just online um, on the flight website. So yeah, and that way you can use the bathrooms before they get clogged and dirty with everyone else once they've finished their meals. Tip number nine, find a way to escape, whether it's movies, books, podcasts. I love podcasts. Find something interesting to listen to. Um, I like to edit as well during the flight. Editing videos and editing photos makes the time go by so quickly. Bring some work with you. If you've got work to do, this is your un uninterrupted time, which is all for you. So use it wisely. And every hour that you can kill is one less hour that you have to worry about. Tip number 10, make sure all your electronics are charged up, especially your laptop, because most electronics you can probably charge with an external charger, but on the aeroplane, they don't always have a laptop socket to charge a laptop. So if you want to use it, make sure it's at 100%. 
tip number 11 use a sleep aid now this is totally optional um, I don't recommend using this for everyone obviously check with your doctor to see if it, using a sleep aid is right for you uh, they also can be kind of addictive so if you have an addictive personality I probably suggest against it but I have used them occasionally and they have helped but I only use them on flights where I feel it's going to be a particularly hard journey or long journey so for example I used one um, from Dubai to Hong Kong which was a nine or ten hour flight then I had a four and a half hour layover then I had to do another nine or ten hour flight to Sydney so for that one I used it don't use it all the time um, but it's just an option because if you can sleep through most of that then it makes the whole thing a lot easier so that is all the tips for you there's all my tips on how to survive a long flight i've actually created a pdf that you could download as well it's going to be in the description you could download this take it away and uh, you can just read these tips in pdf format so if you're interested download the link hope you guys enjoyed this video don't forget to follow me on instagram and i will see you guys in my next video